Welcome back, everybody. We are back here at level 27, which is now called Be Quick or Be Dead. And this is the first of the new levels, or, well, not new, really, but they're the ones that have been reordered that we haven't played yet. And actually, I must say, I actually have played this before in one of the recordings that got, uh, uh, that came after Mind Cluster Part 2, which I'm now redoing because of the new order in Mind Cluster Part 3. So, as you can see, it's basically a random dodging level in which you have to go to the exit which is on the other side. Yeah, this isn't exactly my favorite level to set. In fact, it's probably my least favorite, just because it's really not quite as interesting design-wise as some of the other levels that involve dodging, like Convergence or the Inner Plague or things like that. It's kind of just all randomly thrown together, and there's a lot of levels out there like this, so this really doesn't showcase any of Rock's particular, you know, unique design tactics, uh, so if that makes sense. And I am having a lot of trouble getting through these blobs. See, I don't really want to waste any time because the teeth are there, and also the time limit is really short, too, so that's also a problem. But yeah, this is Be Quick or Be Dead, and I got dead, like the squirrel in that joke from... What was that, up, I think? The squirrel got dead. Ah, come on. Let's see, let's try this again. Oh, come on, guys. Okay, there we go. Yeah. See, I'm just going to keep on trying this until I get it. And hopefully this won't take too long. Like, when I did this before, it only took a few tries. I mean, it took a few minutes, but it didn't really take too long, though. I mean, once you get past these blobs, it's not too hard. Yeah. Got a little bit of fireball interference there. Yeah, since everything's random, this is kind of not uh, a very strategic level in terms of the dodging. It's one thing if you can dodge and there's like a certain pattern, like the, like the vast majority of the KSI factor, for instance. Like, that's... That's one thing, but if it's all just random, like even the random part there, I mean, there was a little bit of strategy that you had to, whoa, whoa, guys, did you just see that? That was like, whoa, that was epic. Okay, here you go. We're almost to the end, whoa. Okay, watch out for tankness there. <gasps> Why did I do that? Oh, I totally accidentally pressed the right key. That could have been the most epic solve ever. Oh, man. Do you see the way I went through all those blobs? I mean, they just totally cooperated. That was so cool. Oh, I loved that. Oh, man, that could have been awesome, too. But, yeah, that that one attempt, oh, my goodness, that was totally incredible. I want one like that. Whoa, <gasps> that was great. Oh, man, that kind of reminds me of Organized Chaos by Pie Guy. I don't know if any of you watching have played that level, but if you haven't, great dodging level. It's basically the most rigid dodging level ever where you have like a certain pattern you have to follow and like which you change comes after a certain number which follows the, you know the number pi and all that. It's a great level. And we solved this one. We can now move on to the next unsolved level which is this one, Dig Dug. And uh, this is actually kind of funny because I have a level called Dig Dug in my set which was based on the game except it's a lot larger. Well, I shouldn't say a lot larger. It's about the same width as this probably, but it's a lot taller. And it involves leading the monsters up to some bombs. So this was pretty easy, not too hard. The next one is called Klein-esque. And it kind of looks like a spook sort of thing with dirt. And I'm kind of worried because I don't know what direction these balls... Okay, so don't go that way. So you have to guess there, basically. But hey, it's at the beginning, so I'm not too mad about that. Okay, so we can't go there at all. Okay, so those are... I guess that isn't really that much guessing, because you really can't go there anyway. So, what's over here? We got a path leading to some balls. Some pink balls, as Rock did would say. And some paramecia, so just... Whoa, okay. Just want to make sure I made it past them. Just dodge all these guys, and we can make it out of this room. Pretty simple. I'm liking this dirt look here. I like how these little areas stand out from the dirt. It kind of reminds me of 
one of my own levels called uh, Air Pocket, which uh, was in CCLP3. So yeah, I'm just trying to be very careful not to step on stuff here, and I don't know which direction that ball is uh, supposed to be in, so I'm just going to avoid it all the other. And this is what leads down the exit. Okay, we know that much. Okay, and this goes over here. Watch out for the teeth. And up here to another crossroads with the ice. See, I like this design style where you get to cross around and do all kind of stuff like that. And, whoa, lots of gliders. Whoa, okay. Be very careful there, JB. Okay, this looks like just plain old ball dodging. Nothing too difficult. At least I'm hoping not. Okay, there seems to be a bit of a pattern here. I wonder if Rock Dead intended that. I, he probably did, knowing him. See, as so far as dodging is concerned, see, this is more like it. See, this is much more fun than the last level, because there's a pattern, and you can learn it. And you see, if you mess up one time, then you can always come back for another round, and, and you'll know how to do it. And you can learn from your mistakes. It's not all at the mercy of which direction the blobs go. Okay, I hope none of those gliders went up here. I'm guessing not. He, I'm hoping Rock Dead built this such that it, uh, they all go maybe according to a predetermined pattern. There's no collisions. And we got one last one left over here, which you guys probably saw. It was over here somewhere. Being very careful not to step on these monsters. I made a level called Rains, which was just named after one of my best friends uh, in high school that had this monsters on dirt thing. Unfortunately, it was busted and it could be beaten in like six seconds, so that was kind of a bummer, but I was still pretty proud of it. It was a fun level, I thought. And now it would appear that Klein-esque is almost done, and I don't know what the title's all about. Is it like Calvin Klein? I mean, maybe those were like pairs of underwear that we were going through or, or something. Okay, sorry for putting that image in you guys' head, but anyhow... Next level is called Year of the Flamingo. This was another one that I had played in my uh, run uh, after Mind Cluster that's now obsolete. And it eventually involves a walker clone machine spawning walkers all over the place and you getting a bunch of chips, much like Jumping Swarm. But personally, I find this level a lot more interesting just because there's water, there's some block pushing involved, like you can see right here. And at least the walkers can actually die, which helps make things a little bit more bearable. And you can just go around here toward the middle, just be careful. There's a few spots where the walkers will tend to bounce off, like that one spot where we just saw three of them going to the water. And let's see, there's just a few chips left. I'm hoping I can get this on my first try, because I think I did when I saw this originally. Whoa, okay, careful there, JB. Okay, this... Okay, where's the exit? Is it on the other side? I think it is. Oh, wait, it's over here. Okay, let me go ahead and put a block down here. Because there are four blocks all in all. Okay, just trying to be safe. And thankfully, the blocks can be used to block the walkers too, like you saw right there. So that's also cool. And now I'm going to use these blocks here to get to the yellow key on this side. And as, in case you haven't noticed by now, the design of the water structure here in the middle is that of a flamingo, which is pretty cool. And so let's see, I'm just going to try to not uh, get over those chip sockets just so that the walkers won't come through. And I'm going to try to get in here. I'm trying to stay close to the water just so I can get out of the way in case a walker comes in. And we made it out. Not a problem. Alright, Assassin is the next one. It's another dodging level. This time it involves teeth monsters. And I also played this one a while back. And it's pretty easy. I got it in my first try back then as well. I'm hoping I can do that here as well. And... Looks like there's no chips. Whoa, okay, that was close. Was not expecting that. Okay, so let's just keep them at bay there behind the walls. I think I may have just released them by doing that, but hey, I'm just going to run around, get chips, not a problem. 
get some ships going around here, do some more dodging, use the walls to my advantage. Get another one. I like the layout here. This is this is kind of neat how there's a certain pattern of walls that gets repeated. It kind of reminds you of up the block with the chip rooms. I, I think I mentioned that when I played that level in Chips Challenge, but in the level up the block, there's these uh, chip rooms that are created by the shape of the uh, um, the hexagonal rooms, or excuse me, the octagonal rooms. That's the wider circle around in, and uh, they pretty much maintain the same shape throughout the level, which I think is really neat. So just design tactics, which I find really cool. And I'm hoping we're almost done because I'm getting really worried about getting ridiculously murdered, as Rock would say. And I think we're pretty much done. I'm hoping that there's no surprises. And Okay, good. Whew, all the teeth are trapped, and we are out of there. We survived the assassination attempts. And now we got the level Klondike, which we'll do in the next video.